Let's put some numbers to this example so that we can see algebraically how to solve quantitatively for the change in equilibrium when a tax is put in place. So let's say that we have a demand curve equal to 50,000 minus 12,000 times the price. And recall that this price is the price that the consumer pays in total for the item. And let's say that the supply curve, consistent with what we had in the example that used to be right here, is equal to negative 5,000 plus 10,000 times the producer's price, or the price that the producer gets to keep net of the tax. And let's say again that our tax is 50 cents per unit. So we can think about how these match up to what we've drawn here and think about how to solve for these different quantities. The first thing that we can do that's pretty easy, that we've done before in fact, is to just solve for the original pre-tax quantity and price. And to do that, we can notice that before the tax, the price to the consumer and the price to the producer are the same. So before the tax, we really only have one relevant price. Let's just call that P. So then in equilibrium, we know that quantity demanded and quantity supplied have to be the same. So we can just plug in for supply and demand like we did before. And we can say here now the 50,000 minus 12,000 times the price has got to equal negative 5,000 plus 10,000 times price. Now I just do a little bit of algebra, put all the p's on one side, put all the numbers on the other side, and we see that 22,000 times P is equal to 55,000. Or, if you have a calculator, you can see then that our equilibrium price is $2.50. Now we can plug this price back into either of our supply and demand equations to figure out the equilibrium quantity. Here, if I plug a price of $2.50 into my supply curve, I see that my Q star is equal to negative 5,000 plus 10,000 times $2.50, which is equal to 20,000. So we can label these things on our diagram over here. We can see that our original equilibrium price, this P star, is $2.50. And we can see that our original equilibrium quantity is 20,000. Now to find out the rest of the quantities, we're going to have to figure out algebraically how to shift this supply curve here. So that's the next step. So what we want to do now is we want to think about how to shift the supply curve vertically by 50 cents. Note that this is not the same as just taking 50 cents and adding it here because all that's doing is that's actually shifting horizontally by 0.5 which is not what you're trying to do. So we have to think about rather than a horizontal shift how to get a shift along the price axis here. And there are two ways to do this. The first is that we can say, well, we can put this supply curve in terms of price and then just add 50 cents to the price. That seems reasonable enough, so let's go through that here. So we can say our quantity supplied originally is equal to negative 5,000 plus 10,000 times price. Well, if we're solving for that, then we want to isolate this on one side of our equation. So we can say 10,000 
times price. I'm just going to use a P here. Hopefully it won't get too confusing. Is equal to quantity supplied plus 5,000. Now we can get P by itself by dividing both sides of the equation by 10,000. So we get P is equal to 1 over 10,000 times quantity supplied plus 5,000 over 10,000, which is just 1 half. This is what we referred to earlier as our inverse supply curve. Just because rather than stating quantity supplied as a function of price, we're now stating price as a function of quantity supplied. The advantage of this inverse supply curve is now it's more clear how we would go about shifting it up by 50 cents. That we could say now our new supply curve, this S prime, is just going to be of the form P is equal to what we had before plus the amount we're shifting it up by. So that seems simple enough because this is just 1 over 10,000 times quantity supplied plus 1 half plus 1 half, which is just equal to plus 1. But now we have to go back and put this in terms of you know, quantity supply as a function of price. We have to switch it back so that we can actually do something useful with it. So okay, that's easy enough. So if price is equal to this, then we can say P minus 1 is equal to 1 over 10,000 times quantity supplied. Or quantity supplied is equal to negative 10,000, just multiplying both sides by 10,000, plus 10,000 P. So let's compare our old and our new supply curves. Our old supply curve was just negative 5,000 plus 10,000 P. And our new supply curve is negative 10,000 plus 10,000 P. Now, notice that the coefficient on P has not changed, which is not surprising because we haven't changed the slope of our supply curve. We've just shifted it. But notice here that there's no direct correspondence between the amount that we shifted, well, no direct clear correspondence, it's obvious at least, between this shift by 50 cents and the change from 5,000 to 10,000 here. So one way that we can do is we want to be super clear, do our inverse supply curve, add our 50 cents, and then switch it back. And that's a completely valid way to go, but there is an easier way to do this. Another way we can think of shifting the supply curve is to remember the relationship between the price that the consumer pays and the price that the producer gets to keep. Because as we said before, this shift intuitively represents a shift from putting supply in terms of the producer's price to putting supply in terms of the consumer's price. So we should be able to use this relationship directly to figure out what our new supply curve should look like. So we can say here that our original supply curve was equal to negative 5,000 plus 10,000 times the producer's price. Well, given this, we can just solve for the producer's price in this equation here and plug it in. So if we were to solve for the producer's price here, we would say that the price of the producer is just equal to the consumer's price minus 50 cents. Not too bad. And now we can just plug this in where we see the producer's price here. So we can also represent quantity supplied as negative 5,000 plus 10,000 times the consumer's price minus 50 cents. Well, this seems less annoying because now all we have to do is multiply this out to get our new supply curve. 
So we can say that this is negative 5,000 plus 10,000 times p sub c minus one half of 10,000, which is 5,000. Or quantity supplied is equal to negative 10,000 plus 10,000 times the consumer's price. Note that doing it this way gets us to the same answer as we had before. It's just somewhat more straightforward since you're not switching things around to solve for price and then switching it back. But either way is equally valid, and this is what we're going to use in order to solve for the new equilibrium when we put the tax in place. As with all of our equilibrium calculations, our equilibrium occurs where quantity supplied and quantity demanded are the same. Well now we have quantity supplied in terms of the consumer's price, and we have quantity demanded in terms of the consumer's price, so this should be easy to solve for just as we did before. So we can just plug in for quantity supplied and quantity demanded, and say that negative 10,000 plus 10,000 times the consumer's price has to be equal to 50,000 minus 12,000 times the consumer's price. So we just do a little bit of algebra here, and we can put all the p's together and all the numbers on the other side. So here we can say 22,000 times the consumer's price is equal to 60,000. Or the price to the consumer is just 60,000 over 22,000. We can reduce this, obviously. We can say this is just 60 over 22, which is 30 over 11. And say, well, this doesn't come out nicely to a perfectly round decimal, but what we can see is that this is approaching $3. We can get out the calculator and notice that this 30 over 11 is approximately equal to $2.73. So then we can easily say that the price that the producer gets to keep is just this $2.73 minus the 50 cents of the tax, which is equal to $2.23. The last thing that we have to solve for then is the equilibrium quantity with the tax. And again, we can find that by plugging the appropriate price into either our supply or our demand equation. So for example, if we say that our supply is equal to negative 10,000 plus 10,000 times the consumer's price, then we can say that the quantity, that the equilibrium quantity with the tax is equal to negative 10,000 plus 10,000 times 30 over 11. Again, getting out the calculator, we can see that this is equal, approximately equal to, at least, 17,273. It's also worth noting, just because we're dealing with decimals rather than fractions here, that the producer's price, you know, to some element of rounding error, is approximately equal to $2.23.